We're uh, grateful for everyone that came out today. We appreciate you being here. We're going to just share some items and we will do that as expeditiously and appropriately as possible. I want to especially say thank you to several media people that are with us. We appreciate you being here as well as the numerous pastors that are behind me and pro-life leaders and of course there are concerned citizens that have gathered here as well. And we wish you all a Merry Christmas. Uh, my name is Dr. Kevin Baird. I am the pastor of Legacy Church here in Charleston, South Carolina as well as the executive director of the South Carolina Pastors Alliance. And our purpose here today is to let the public know of a deep concern we have with regards to a connection that exists between the Medical University of South Carolina and the local abortion mill here in our area. And this concern, of course, exists on a moral level, but it also spills over into the area of ethical, financial, and legal concerns as well. And so today we have just a couple of speakers that will be sharing some brief but very important information. And I would ask that if there are any questions that we could field these questions after all have shared and we will hang around in order to do that. Uh, the biographies of each of those that we'll be sharing are found in the press kits, so I will dispense with a lot of introductions. And our first speaker is pastor of Ridge Baptist, Dr. Robert Eubanks, who has experience and education in this area, and he is a general in the arena of engaging the culture. So, Pastor Eubanks. Thank you, Kevin. The information that uh, we're going to share with you today came to our attention just a few months ago, and it concerns uh, MUSC, which is a state funded by, I think, some 3% of their budget by the tax dollars of South Carolina. and. In a nutshell, the information we found out was is that the doctor in the OBGYN department, as well as the residents who are being trained in that department, have been making many visits to the Charleston Women's uh, Clinic or Hospital, whatever you want to call it, we call it an abortion mill, and they have been associated with this for some time. We have pictures to validate that. We have evidence that we have given to some people and yet they failed to really examine it the way we want it to be done today. It's in your press packet there and we can connect the dots. My concern is that this is the 40th year of Roe versus Wade, B. Wade, and at the same time when we think about that, uh, we in South Carolina since 1973 have killed over 500,000 babies. And here in Charleston alone, every year it's close to 3,000 are killed just a few miles from here. We use the word kill because that's what it is, because at that center, it's primarily abortion on demand. Uh, they would have you to think from a newspaper article this morning that the one who interviewed me the other day that the abortions being performed there are med medical abortions, that is, the threat of the mother's life. And when you do the statistics that DHEC makes all of them uh, keep a record of, it's less than one half of 1%. So if 6,700 babies are killed every year, about 35 or 40 fall into that category. MUSC has said to us, not to us personally, but to Senator Grooms, who will speak in a moment, that they have an agreement with the center, and yet they have not been forthcoming to tell us what that agreement is. The abortion clinic itself says on their website they are affiliated with MUSC, which gives the impression to a young woman coming there that it's all connected. I have problems with a state agency being involved with a private abortion mill and there's two senators here who were not really aware of this relationship. And my concern, a second concern, would be liability. In fact, back in November, the first part of November, there was someone there who was outside praying and a prayer walk outside the center. And the ambulance came to the center and took a girl from the center back to the hospital at USC. My question is, there are such things as botched abortions where someone can bleed to death or be injured. In that case, who's going to be sued? The hospital with my tax dollars? Is that a liability for the state of South Carolina? There again, we have no copy of the agreement. We have no understanding of how this is working out. And really to put fuel on the fire, recently our state legislator and legislators have agreed that we would only adopt parts of Obamacare that kept us from funding abortions. And so our state being forced to take Obamacare, we took the option where we would not participate in where those abortions were paid for uh, through those funds of insurance. Now, 
We've done that to tell the federal government we don't want to kill babies with our tax dollars. And yet here we have an agency such as MUSC, and it's a fine agency. We applaud all the work they do, the people's lives they save, the children's hospital, all that. We're not against closing down the hospital. But yet we're killing babies with tax dollars, and we've been assured by our politicians and those we elect that they would not let tax dollars ever be associated with directly or indirectly with abortions on demand. I mean, that's been stated time and time again. In fact, I have the issue with the Republican Party and the Tea Party. We have a governor, Nikki Haley, who we contacted and sent over 300 letters. I know my church alone and children sent letters to her, and we have copies in the press release, asking for her to investigate this and to stop this. And the letters we got back were forum letters. A fifth grader could have wrote. And it really said nothing, absolutely nothing. So, as I promised in the letter, it would become public and it would become political because these Republicans and Tea Party, I'm not a Democrat, I've been a Republican primarily because of the platform that talks about pro-life. I am concerned about social issues. If you kill people, you don't have an economy. We've killed 60 million people. You know why you're hurting financially? You killed your heritage. You have no one to pay your taxes, no one to buy clothes, and all the things that go with that. Do the math. People are the economy. And I applaud the governor for getting jobs in here. But it's hypocrisy when you do one thing, and then you turn around and you won't even listen to us. So I called her office, and I talked with two of her aides. The first one referred me to someone else. I said she handles her scheduling. I said, I asked for 30 minutes. Here's the answer I got from Nikki Haley's office. Not from her, but from one of her aides. The governor is a very busy lady. She doesn't have time for this issue right now. Those were exact words. A news reporter said, well, how can you verify that? That's your word versus her word. Well, I'm not going to use names, but I'm a minister and a Christian, and I don't make it a practice of telling lies in the public. I was told she didn't have time. I'm concerned about this. You see, the Bible says we need to speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves, Proverbs 31 8. So I'm the voice crying from the wounds. I'm the voice for those little babies who can't speak, who said enough already. If a woman decides to have an abortion, let her go to a private place. Let her do that on her own conscience, but not on my tax dollar. Don't let any agency that we support be involved in this in any way whatsoever. And you say, well, it's not direct funds, but it is. Because if that clinic doesn't have doctors, they don't kill babies. And here we are providing doctors and students. Another state agency that ties into this and is very close is the College of Charleston. They have a class that is being taught by a professor who requires, as far as getting credit in that class, that the students escort or become escorts for the girls going into the clinic. That is, helping them out of the cars, into the car, and back and so forth, and staying with them. There again. How do we have a class teaching students, and it's a requirement to do something This, you know, really is against all understanding? Now, I know, and there are people out there who would disagree with us, and we're fully aware of that. However, these issues of liability, the issues of loss of life on our tax time, spins for me as a religious leader into the area of religious liberty. Now, I'm living in a state that I believe as a Christian Thou shalt not kill, and I'm opposed to abortion. And I have no way of influencing this government except what I did, and they shut me off with my petition, wouldn't hear me. So now they're violating my religious liberty because my morals and my principle comes from God's word, and I have a right to speak up. And yet I'm not giving a voice. And yet I'm having something done. This is very close to Nazi Germany, my friends. We are on a slippery slope, and most of you can't see it. When you can justify taking someone else's life, when others cry out and say it's an injustice, and you say, well, that's not a good comparison, it's apples and oranges. No, you need to do your history. It started with the innocent. It started with those who couldn't speak for themselves to try to improve the economy. And then it went to people like me and these preachers back here to silence the voice. We've killed 60 million people, 10 times the amount of the Holocaust. And so we're trying to wear, raise the consciousness but I would plead with the governor once again, this is in her ball court. She is the executor of this state. These board members, some of them are appointed by her. They answer to her. These two senators over here have tried to find ways to defund uh, 
you know, part of the finances of MUSC to get their attention. And they're going to be introducing legislation uh, in, in, in next year to be able to help alleviate this. Anyway, let me bring this to a conclu conclusion. In the future, I as a Christian is going to have a hard time voting Republican in the state of South Carolina. I'm tired of these politicians calling me and saying, can we come talk with you? I'm tired of them coming and bringing all their information and saying, hey, we would like for your people to support us. I'm tired of the Tea Party calling themselves a conservative group. You may not agree with us, but to me, conservative not only covers fiscal policy, but it also involves human life. And I think we have a right to do that. And if they're going to come courting us, then we're going to hold them accountable. And, you know, we got an election coming up next year. And right now she's unopposed. I don't know if we'll find somebody to oppose her, but I hope we do. To send a message that if you're going to come to us and you want us to vote for you, you better be pro-life. And then when we turn to you, you better support us. Because if you're not, you're going to lose a lot of votes. So may that serve a message to uh, Nikki Haley and her administration and others in this state. These two men right here are pro-life to the core. They've been in my church. They've been on the floor of the Senate. I've seen the videos of them crying out for the babies. They're part of this voice. That's why they're here today. And uh, they'll be introduced in a moment. That's all I have right now. If you want to ask me some questions afterward, i got some more information, but I don't want to steal all the thunder here. I've got a lot of information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It is my privilege now to introduce to you State Senator Larry Grooms, who represents the 37th District. He's a consistent conservative voice and has been mentioned a voice for the unborn. Thank you, Senator Grooms, for being with us today. God bless. It's great to live in a wonderful state like South Carolina. We've got much to be proud of in standing right here, just not too far away, in the shadows, in fact, of one of the greatest institutions in South Carolina, our medical university, an institution that we're all proud of, an institution that was formed to protect life, to promote life, to help all life. That's its mission, that's its core, to educate South Carolinians and others on the medical arts so that they can protect and preserve and promote and extend life because we believe in life and then we discover that this institution that we're so proud of that many South Carolinians are glad to talk about because of what they do we discover that not only are they into promoting life, they're now in the business of promoting death. Their association with the women's clinic, where last year over 2,000 human lives were taken, that's not promoting life. That's promoting a culture that does not value life. And when a culture doesn't value life, we have no real rights as humans. The first life, the first right ever agreed to on this land in the United States, before the United States, was the right to life. To life. If, if they can take your life, they can take your liberty. If they can take your liberty, they can take your property. So in a culture of life, civilized people should not tolerate what this fine institution is doing to promote death. We questioned about this practice. This institution that so many of us love, they respond by saying, well, we do have this affiliation, but don't worry. We're not exactly paying these folks who work for us. We're actually training them. We're training the next generation of abortionists here at MUSC. That's right. So you're exactly right. And today, I call on 
the Medical University of South Carolina to end its affiliation with the women's clinic. Yeah. And ask other legislators across this great state to join with me as we value life in our request to get this great institution this to promote life to end this affiliation with the culture of death. Thank you all for coming out today. Thank you for your thank you for valuing life. We appreciate you, Senator Burns, very much. We wanted to put a relevant face on this discussion, and so we've asked the Executive Director of the Abolitionist Society of South Carolina, Mrs. Melissa Cole, to come and share for just a moment, as she has a personal experience as well as education in this area. Melissa, come share. Today, 3,500 babies will be murdered in the United States of America in the safest place in the world for them, their mother's womb. Two babies are murdered every minute of every day in the United States of America. These are the facts. It is the greatest and most dehumanizing evil of our age. For years, I personally bought the lie that abortion liberates women. For years, I lived in pain and suffering because of this liberation I bought into. Women, we have been given the greatest gift, the ability to give life. To bring forth life from our bodies, men cannot do this ever. It is our reproductive right to bring forth the God-given right to life. For us to choose who lives and who dies does not liberate us. It weighs us down with guilt and shame I have seen women hurt, angry, addicted, depressed, and scarred by this quote-unquote choice. Abortion does not make a woman unpregnant. It makes her a mother of a dead child. The Department of Women's and Gender Studies at our own College of Charleston has for years encouraged students to work as escorts at the abortuary in West Ashley. The students receive credit for their course by walking the women into the building where the MUSC doctors perform the abortions. What are these students learning? It is teaching them that liberating women allows them to kill their children, that human life is only worth saving if mom says it's okay, that mistakes lead to murder, that this is the only choice in a crisis pregnancy. Who is teaching these students the value of life? The students are only learning to kill for their convenience. It upsets me to know that our pro-life governor blatantly has ignored our request to end this program at MUSC that facilitates students to assist at the abortuary. Our state-funded schools supporting workers to a privately owned abortion mill. How about sending these students to a crisis pregnancy center? Our tax dollars going to the assistance of the murder of the unborn. It is not okay with me as a taxpayer. It's not okay with me as a Christian. And it's not okay with me as an abolitionist. I will end with this quote that I found very fitting from John F. Kennedy. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. Everyone has a right to life. Thank you. And to conclude us this afternoon, it is my distinct honor to introduce to you another one of our distinguished state senators, Lee Bright. Uh, he uh, is as well a great voice for the unborn and is currently a Republican candidate for the U.S. Senate seat, now held by Lindsey Graham. Senator Lee Bright, we're glad you're with us today. Constitution says we cannot be denied life, liberty, or property without due process. We have a whole generation of Americans that were denied that due process, and they've lost their lives because of it. Because we didn't stand. Because the church hasn't stand strong enough, the elected officials haven't stand strong enough, but now it's time to make that stand. 
Now, I'm a cancer survivor, and I have so much appreciation for what this institution has done in cancer research, what it's done for children, but it sickens me to think that they would get involved in this cultural death, that they would be a part of it. Now, I don't know all the details of what's going on here. I'm trying to find out, but as a state senator, when I pick up the phone and, and ask to get a return phone call from MESC and they don't return my calls, that makes me think that maybe there's something going on. That's right. That's right. So I ask you to demand, to demand from this institution answers on what they're going on with these abortion mills. If they're involved, if they're complicit in this, then we need to demand answers to find out what's going on now. And I thank God for men like Senator Larry Grooms who will stand with me and we're not going to give up. I mean, I, we're pit bulls. And let me tell you something, when a pit bull gets his teeth into something that's not letting go, we're not letting go of this issue. So I ask you to call the governor, to write a letter to the governor, and ask her to assist us in this, because public opinion matters. So stand up, stand with us, and let's take the fight to these abortion clinics and tell them to stop killing our children, especially when it comes to our tax dollars. So I want to thank you for being here, taking the time to be here, but this is where we start. This is not where we end. Let's march on this institution and demand answers and demand them now. Thank you. And I want to say again how much I appreciate our state senators dropping by and sharing with us just a moment. I appreciate all the clergy that are standing behind us as well. This is just a small representation of hundreds of pastors in this state who stand for life. These are the ones that were able to come to Charleston today. Some of these are in the region, some of these have driven in from other parts of the state. And so we appreciate their commitment to life. Uh, we don't know if the press may have a question or two while we're gathered like this. If not, you're at liberty to certainly ask us any questions uh, that you may have uh, as we conclude this conference.